Hello little hoes, my name is Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be one of my top five videos and today it will be my top five most pest ridden house plants. Now these are plants, majority of them I don't have in my collection anymore just because they were constantly getting overrun with bugs no matter how much I treated them they were just always problematic. Um, there are a couple that are still in my collection but again for the most part they're passed away or put out of their misery. So probably starting at number five would be ferns. I don't have great luck with ferns in general just because the amount of humidity needed to keep them happy I just can't provide for them. Also, majority of the ones that I've grown constantly were getting scale and scale isn't a huge problem for most of my collection. I've had a couple of breakouts in the past, but for the most part, not a biggie. But the ferns would constantly be covered in them. I had a silver pteris fern that just one day was suddenly covered in scale. And then a couple of years later, my beautiful rabbit foot fern was just caked with it. I've never seen that much scale on a plant before. Unfortunately, both of them I deemed unsalvageable. So yeah, they are no longer with us. Speaking of scale, another very problematic plant for me was Philodendron Siloam, or Thematophyllum as it's called now, not a philodendron. That thing was a weak grower and the scale loved it. And it was just at that point where I was kind of fed up with its lack of ambition, not growing and the scale problem, so I might have left it outside in the cold to um, finish it off, really. Crested cacti. Um, specifically for me, I had two serious, I believe it was a Ming thing it was called, and a even more crested, contorted form of that. So cool, so unique. I love crested, distorted looking plants, especially cacti, but these things were so difficult. When you have a crested plant, it's more contorted and there's tighter little places for bugs to hang out. So you really have to keep on top of treating them if you do notice any sort of outbreak. Unfortunately, the mealybug was so bad on them that despite treating it, despite trying to get alcohol swabs and get rid of the mealybugs, using systemic, it just wasn't effective. And between the treatments and the bugs, the plants passed away. Similarly, plants like this um, stapelia and hernias, they can also be difficult when there's a lot of little side branching, a lot of spiky growth like this, just because it's easy for them to hide in there and unless you're checking your plants up close, it can go a long time without being noticed and treated. Thankfully, the hernias and stapelias, this family, while they are problematic with the mealybugs, they are a lot easier to clean and treat than other forms of cacti like the Cresteds. Alocasia poly. I have this guy in my kitchen. I've had it for a number of years. The plant's awesome. I love the leaves on it. In the winter especially, I struggle with spider mites. And I've said it before, alocasias, colocasias are just spider mite magnets. And I've thought about getting rid of the plant when it's been at its worst, coated in spider mites but I do love it and the treatment isn't too difficult. But my experience with this plant, I probably won't ever truly get into collecting alocasias and colocasias. Probably my number one 
most difficult pest-ridden plant would be Hindu rope hoya. I love the look of this plant. I would love to have this plant in my collection, but I've tried twice and I just can't keep the mealybugs off of it. It is so difficult, what with all those little contorted little taco leaves, to get the pests out, namely mealybugs, that I just won't try again. I have purposely let both die, both specimens I had. I had a variegated one too, and same thing. It just, it's not worth it. I won't get it again. I will admire it from afar. From Other people can grow it in their collection and I can enjoy it just as easily. <laughs> so that was today's little video, guys. I would love to know what are the most pest-ridden plants in your guys' collection. Did you give up on them? Do you still treat them and try and keep the pests at bay? As always, stay safe, healthy, and sane, guys, and I'll talk to y'all real soon. Goodbye.